Okay, starting where we left off, uh, I had to split the video uh, for sake of time. So um, next we'll move back into uh, the next section of the tutorial, as you'll see here, rules to live by. Then some guidelines for people uh, who are new to the um, to the modding scene. Uh, it, this is really paramount in uh, in Arma. Is you know you really have to respect authors' rights. Uh, there is a uh, whole website dedicated to it that gives a really detailed breakdown of um, you know what is considered uh, you know what are considered to be. Arma modders rights and you know uh, some general rules of etiquette so there's a big you know it's a big frequently asked question document that'll really help you guide uh, guide you through some of the most commonly asked questions and some of the misconceptions um, then uh, another one that's really important is uh, if you're going to be creating mods and uh, releasing them, it is really important to get an off-pack tag, uh, which is uh, was previously down for a while, but it seems to be back up and running now fine. And as you can see here, it lists all of the different tags that have been claimed. Um, and there's, you know, there's, uh, I think there's some cases where you can actually, you know, if nobody's used it in a long time, you can pursue it. But, um, uh, you know, for example, we, you know, registered, uh, I registered ours uh, a long time ago for, not too long ago, uh, we got May 2013. See that? It's been but a quick year. Um, so... Yeah, register an off-pack tag, and this is, to briefly summarize what this is about, okay, so when we go back into our P drive, um, this is the purpose of a P drive. Uh, you can see I use our off-pack tag for every single add-on that we make, everything. You don't ever, ever, ever create an add-on that doesn't have a, um, uh, a prefix, and even further so when you get into things like land class buildings um, uh, so in the artificial objects same thing you you because we're modifying a bohemia asset if we left this even just this model without our prefix our Ofpec prefix it could overwrite that model in areas of the game where we don't intend it to uh, so, you know, on our map, Serrani, obviously we want to load our army hut, but, you know, if you're running our add-on and you are playing Lingor, you might not want our army hut on Lingor, or, you know, it's not, it hasn't been properly placed or set up to be the replacement on Lingor. So, um, you know, or, or, in a, or in a default, um, you know, Arma map as well, you know, uh, we, have, we have lots of buildings that are also contained in Arma 2. So, you know, these can then overwrite the default buildings if you don't give them an individual name, which is easiest to do with a prefix. Um, you know, we've double done that in some cases where we've added, you know, with door or, um, or in many cases, uh, open to indicate that we've opened the the building and you know here open to dam which means it has a uh, uh, progressive damage uh, models so that you know that's um, that's really important to have an OFPEC tag to make sure you're not using someone else's that's really important not to do uh, back to the respecting authors rights and then um, and then I mean that's pretty much it for the OFPEC and then let's see what we get into next uh, use Micro's tools, that's obvious. Oh, that is the third one. Okay, yeah, third. Use Micro's tools. So that it really should just be obvious. Uh, so, you know, I covered Arma 2P and Arma 3P, which, you know, I mean, I think you'd have to be insane not to use those. Um, but uh, then there are, um, Micro has some other tools as well, which are equally phenomenal. Um, so let's go again to there. I feel like uh, going to Yahoo to type and search for Google. But so when you get into um, all of his uh, tools here, you have what is called PBO project, and uh, it's it's an all-in-one um, packing tool, which is what we've been using exclusively for Serrani uh for ages it prevents 
packing errors, it prevents coding errors, it prevents you know misplaced files, it prevents it, it's just head head to toe the best imaginable uh, solution for packing your projects. Um, so use Micro's tools. Um, you know, more like it says, more specifically, pack all your projects with PBO project, uh, PBO project, and um, this also allows for signing your files, which without that being automated can be another unbelievable nightmare. Uh, I'll do a, another tutorial on signing files uh, shortly, which is another layer to packing files and, and releasing files that becomes a you know again it's just it's just not built into the system or the tools uh, effectively as it is, and it's something that's really really necessary, um, as stated by four sign your files. Uh, so it's made really easy with uh, Micro's project. Uh, it's really not without. Um, I can do a, I'll do a comparison video. But uh, so then uh, another one which I still haven't managed to do, so don't take it too seriously, is pick a discipline. Uh, you know, whether you want to do sound modifications by way of creating sound effects or even recording sound effects, because that's something that's greatly lacking in, in not even just Arma, but the gaming world in general. Apparently, there's just not very many people capturing and uh, sharing quality uh, sound effects. Uh, so any Americans out there with good gun collections, you know, get yourself a fancy microphone and start shooting. Um, voice acting, you know, uh, I I think that you know it's something that could really uh, really add dimension to um, to missions, to cinematics, to uh, just about everything. You know, I, I mean, I'm just sitting here narrating a written tutorial uh, because I I think the uh, the uh, inviting nature of, of, of human speech is something that is uh, drastically lacking in the ARMA community. Um, so, you know, voice acting, you know, go, go do it. That's good stuff. Um, mission editing, uh, both single player and multiplayer. We've kind of been over all this uh, briefly before, but here's the, uh, more, this is the more detailed breakdown. Um, Single player and multiplayer, um, you know, this can break right down into coding where you're creating your own modules uh, in the missions um, that you're using or, you know, coding entire external portions uh, that, uh, you know, that act on the mission or interpret actions of the mission or, you know, st stored characteristics of the mission. Um, you know, all the way to just cinematic recordings. And, I mean, again, it, it's... The sky's the limit inside of uh, the the only failing I think of the Arma cinematic uh, is that there's no render mode where you can guarantee that uh, everything does what you are expecting it to do. Uh, sometimes you have to replay a mission, or even drastically heavily edit a mission to to in order to force it to do what you want uh, to get the final visual outcome that you are looking for. Um, you know, but it is a extraordinarily robust and open environment for you to make uh, cinematics in, um, as demonstrated by a lot of the guys uh, on YouTube. You should really take a look around for some Arma 2 uh, cinematics. They can be really great. Um, then coding, uh, you know, I touched on in the mission uh, editing part as well. You know, there's uh, Arma allows for just an unbelievable amount of scripting. Um, and code integration uh, up to the up to and including the use of external databases, virtual machines. Uh, all assets in Arma are interpreted by a code uh, config CPPs. Um, every asset needs to be configured. Uh, in order for the game to recognize it and take action, um, many of the mods are nothing more than modification to existing configs uh, or you know heavy additions of original SQF scripts and functions. And you know on uh, on a lot of levels, that's a it's a preferred way to mod because you don't require any download. If you can fit your modifications and your scripts into a mission file and host it on the server, uh, you you never need to have anyone download anything. They can just go to your server and play it, and it will be different, which is, you know, a great thing. Uh, c uh, community tool development, um, you know, again, this is, um, m you know, people uh, focus on a lot of things. I mean, you've got entire sites like uh, 
uh, you know, it's not just limited to tool development, but I mean, community development in general. You have, uh, you know, folks like uh, Dyslexi, who obviously adds great value to the franchise by, you know, uh, detailing so much of um, the tactical gameplay that they have, so many of the features of Arma, uh, you know, suggested features for Arma. And then you have um, guys like uh, Foxhound, who's hosting, you know, who hosts Armaholic and uh, helps support the modders by providing mirrors for them and, you know, promoting them. Uh, uh, in a single place and uh, you, you know giving them a, a space to uh, to discuss with their the people who are using their assets uh, how you know feedback uh, provide feedback and get you know thanks and whatnot uh, you've got folks like sick boy and uh, Q who have obviously you know uh, just you know added endless amounts of uh, community support and content uh, in terms of you know, nothing to do with uh, actual game content uh, as well as game content obviously but you have uh, Dev Heaven, uh, Play With Six um, you know uh, these are just tremendously valuable uh, uh, assets and um, you know, so that can be your entire focus is just is just uh, you know building out the community. Uh, then you know, obviously, you have model making, and this can range from uh, um, you know the basic sort of. Um, yeah, you know, you, you, it can range from anything. You can be making, you know, soda cans and and uh, you know little items uh, for people to pick up as you know uh, loot or uh, you know at, to be used as assets in games. You know, you know like flares and and uh, chem lights, etc. Uh, or it can be you know weapons or vehicles or players or buildings or plants or trees. I mean, the 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 modeling is you know everything in Arma besides the terrain itself is you know is models and uh, then you have you know texturing um, you have all the uh, the textures the sample textures in the Arma 1 and Arma 2 and public data releases so you can just do nothing but you know modify existing textures or add to them and change them or this can be you know making uh, you know completely original or new ones for for existing assets or most of the the more advanced model makers uh you know create their textures with materials and a uh materials and shaders and rv mats uh in in, in third party software um uh that's one thing uh texturing you know for sure that is not going to get done within uh the confines of arma tools uh, you're not going to produce a quality texture or edit a quality texture in any way, shape, or form within the Arma tools. That's that's something that's going to require GIMP or Photoshop or you know a third-party modeling software. Um, definitely not going to be doing that in uh, in text view. Uh, and then terrain artist, as mentioned above, uh, this pretty much means everything. Uh, you have to be familiar with or comfortable with you know doing just about everything. All right, once again, I'm going to cut the video short there. Um, it's going to split into a third part where I break down some links and whatnot. Um, but that gives you pretty much an idea of all the um, individual focuses. So we'll see you next time in the next video. And uh, hit like if you enjoyed it. And thanks for watching.